history behind the ASB started with an idea of Dr. Gordon Huggins back in 2016. We'll go back in time where he'll describe the development of his idea, the process of enlisting Charlotte Raymond while a patient of his, and then how we connected with Charlotte to take on her concept and vision and partner to bring the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau to life in February 2019. I'm Dr. Gordon Huggins. I direct the Cardiovascular Pathophysiology course here at Tufts University School of Medicine. I'm also a general cardiologist here at Tufts Medical Center. Here at Tufts, I'm proud to say that we have had a unique contribution to the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau. After completing my first year as course director, I found that I was lacking something in the course and I struggled to understand what might enhance or improve the educational value of the course for my students. And I arrived at the conclusion that what was necessary was to have a patient educator or a patient describe their own clinical symptoms, how they perceived the disease, how the disease impacted them to leave the strongest impact on our students. I arrived at this decision in part because I remember being a medical student and having those same experiences. To this day, I can remember sitting in the lecture hall, hearing the patient speak. Those thoughts really resonate with me and I've kept them with me for my entire career. I tasked myself, you know what, I'm going to find a patient to speak to my students. None of my patients realized that they were doing an audition for my course, but every time I would meet a new patient, in the back of my head, I was wondering, is this the one? And then one day, I still remember this day in January, I was called upon to admit a patient, and I found the story to be so incredibly compelling of how this disease had developed and how the doctors didn't understand and what it was and how she went from one doctor to another doctor to another doctor and nobody could figure it out. And then there was the final diagnosis here at Tufts Medical Center that the patient was suffering from cardiac amyloidosis. And I said, wow, what an incredible presentation. This is exactly what I think my students want. So I literally at that time after talking to the patient, asked her exactly what she would be doing on such and such day in September at around 11 o'clock in the morning. And she said that she would make time for that. As the big day was about to arrive, I must admit I had a little bit of trepidation because I didn't know exactly how things were going to go. I didn't really know if my patient was going to be able to articulate her symptoms and to tell her story in a way that would be very impactful. But nonetheless, I was committed that I was going to have a patient educator, a patient voice for my students. We had the presentation, I presented a case description, I provided all sorts of sample images and brought the class through the case, asking the class different questions throughout that process. And then at the end, I allowed my patient 10 minutes to just have free discussion and it was a tremendous success. The students really enjoyed it, and the patient really had just this profound impact that she had left a strong impression on the students. The follow-up of that event was really quite interesting in that my patient was a couple of months later readmitted to the hospital, and some of those same students that saw her presentation then got to participate in her care, and the patient realized that the students remembered her and that she had left a strong impression. From that seed grew the idea, let's find a way to bring patient educators about amyloidosis to all students throughout the United States so that we can greatly improve the education about amyloidosis and the impact of this education. Charlotte approached us in late 2018. She had an idea to create a Speakers Bureau of amyloidosis patients to educate medical students across the United States about the disease and their journey. For over a year, she had been working to organize and launch the Speakers Bureau, but the reality of battling her own disease was requiring the majority of her focus. She realized she needed a partner to bring this vision to life, provide resources, and create an operational platform to support such an educational initiative. Within minutes of hearing Charlotte describe her vision, I knew we at McKenzie's mission were the right partner. I believed in her vision, the use of patients' voices to educate and the focus on medical students. In February of 2019, the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau was launched. Later that year, we returned to Tufts to present to Dr. Huggins' cardiovascular class, 
And although Charlotte was unable to attend in person, we presented Dr. Huggins with a picture to commemorate his role in the history of the ASB. We are so proud of our history. And today, we are demonstrating to medical education a transformative and novel approach of bringing the patient voice to life.